so the next method after npv is known as the internal rate of return so when we come across internal rate of return the word internal what does internal means internal means it's the rate of return within the firm why it is known as internal is because it's not coming from some external factor outside the market for example as i have already said if i am investing rupees 10000 today and i am getting 10100 tomorrow so for that i know how to calculate my rate of return suppose i am investing 10000 today and i am getting this amount of say 10100 tomorrow so i know how to calculate rate of return on it it is simply this minus this divided by this factor so that will give you the re internal rate of return like 101 minus this factor divided by your this amount so this is what is giving you the internal rate of return which is just the basic formula and here it's nothing it looks so complicated but the thing is whatever will be your cash inflow after certain years and whatever amount you have invested divided the base amount so that will give you the required rate of return now for the calculation of irr one thing which is very important is what does the internal rate of return means in terms of like in terms of investment decision is it is the rate of return where your npv value will be equivalent to zero now see if we come across now if we look for this formula in this formula you'll find a term called ct by 1 plus r to the power t minus c0 now the difference of this two value if comes to be zero it is known as like npv is zero so what is internal rate of return as the definition says it is the return at which your npv value will be equal to zero and what is npv npv is cash inflow minus cash outflow whatever is the difference now if we come across an example of irr let us assume that an investment would cost you rupees 20000 and provide inflow of rupees 5430 for 6 years so if i want to calculate irr for this how will i go ahead see the amount 20000 that i have invested will come here and 5430 is for 6 years so 5430 i'll do the present value factor of that fa uh, present value for this amount or you can directly use 5430 by 1 plus the rate uh, to the power 6 so that is why this term pvfa use it is the present value of annual thing for 6 years and you need to calculate it your r which is the internal rate of return now we know that in case of npv this value should be 0 now if if we put that value to be 0 we get the calculation as this and the r comes to be 3.683 so this is the required rate of return so though it seems to be very complicated but the thing is the same formula which you have used for npv only the final outcome you have to put 0 to get the value of r so this is giving you the rate of return to be 3.683 now you can remember that if your cost of capital is greater than this value then only you will not think of investing for example let me decide on this example that we have shown so initially you have invested minus 20000 so it's going out for remaining 6 years you are getting all these as 5430 as your cash inflow and you have you have applied different discounted rate for different year the reason is discounted rate keep if your time keeps on increasing 
then it's become more risky to invest on that project. So discount charge gets increased. So if this rate increases, automatically your NPV will come down. Finally, it will come to zero. And then at certain value, it will be negative. If we put this as a graph with NPV in y-axis, this is your y-axis, and discount rate as your x-axis, and you plot this whole in your chart, you will get this as a uh, chart which is moving down. See, in this part, in this part, you can check that your NPV was maximum when your discount rate is zero. Because there is no discount rate, it's the today's value, so your NPV will be maximum. Now, as soon as your discount rate keeps on increasing, your NPV goes on decreasing. At a certain value, your NPV, this place, your NPV is zero. So, at a certain point, your NPV comes to be zero. So if you go ahead at this place, you can check that your NPV is zero here. So if NPV is zero here, what is the rate of return here? The rate of return is 16%. Then this rate is known as the required rate of return or internal return. This rate is the internal rate of return. So this is the way how we try to differentiate between internal rate of return and NPV. So the point where your NPV, that is net present value, is zero is nothing but your internal rate of return. So if you increase your internal rate of return after this, like if your discount factors keep on increasing, then you will find that NPV becomes negative. In this region, your NPV is negative. Negative means outflow of money. So this rate, at this rate, it is not worth investing on that project. So you can identify that in this area, like this area, this is the place where if you in invest, you'll get positive return. And this is the place where you'll get negative returns. So you should identify this part and this part properly. Again, if we come to acceptance rule, the process is the acceptance rule says that your internal rate of return, if greater than your cost, that is your discounted factor, then only you should accept that project. Because if your internal rate of return is more than the cost involved, then only in those cases you will be generating profit or benefit. So you should invest. Now if it comes to be less, like if you go to the previous slide. In this area, in this area, you will have less amount. So if we move for less amount, here your internal rate of return is less and you should not invest. And finally is if R is equal to K, that is internal rate of return is equal to your discount factor, then it's not going to be giving you any, either any benefit or any loss. So again, uh, if we come across, if we compare the two method, which is uh, NPV and internal rate of return, we will find that there are some criteria and uh, most of the criteria that has been followed in NPV is similar to that of IRR. For example, time value of money, shareholder value and profitability. And for third is the acceptance rule where, you, where I have already mentioned that if your internal rate of return is greater than the discount factor, then only you should go ahead with the acceptance. The third measure for calculation of your discounted factor and uh, investment you should go ahead with or not is your profitability index. So profitability index is not that very complex. It's very like profitability index is simple calculation of your present value of cash inflow and your initial cash outflow. Whatever has been your, your initial outflow that you're putting here and next is your present value of your 
cash inflows for five years maybe or for four years maybe these are your cash flows you have converted them into your present value and then divide it with the cash outflow so you will for this you will get a ratio or a number so for profitability index if I show you this example this is a project with one lakh of investment and these are the various cash inflows again and you will convert each and every cash flow into their present value so this this will be their present value now you will calculate the NPV also and final amount you will divide with the cash outflow so this is giving me the value of 1.1 something for profitability index the criteria for acceptance is if your profitability comes to be greater than 1 PI profitability index is greater than 1 then only you should accept it if it is less than 1 you should reject in this area you should reject accept if it is greater than 1 and finally <coughs> if it is 1 then it will be indifferent So again, what are the various criteria for PI method is it takes into account the time value of money, shareholder profitability and relative profitability. <coughs> so PI is also the third method by which you can think upon investing in a project, whether it will give you a positive return or not. And generally when like when you think of any project you don't pay much attention or you don't uh, think for much calculation then there is a very simple method <coughs> one is called the payback method payback is nothing but it's a very simple calculation on the amount that you have invested this is your initial investment divided by the amount that you're getting as inflow so what does payback? Payback is nothing but it is the number of years on which you are getting your amount that you have invested. For example, you have invested rupees 20,000 here. So if you have invested 20,000 here and your cash inflow is 5 years every year. So it will be 20,000 divided by 5 which will give you 4 years. So that is what is your payback period is. So payback period is nothing but it is the term in number of years which is directly giving you the ratio of the amount you have invested initially and the amount <coughs> that you will be getting in return. See this is a very simple example of payback period. Uh, in this example If we look for this example, see here the example shows that there is 12500 amount which is cash inflow for 7 years and you have invested rupees 50,000. So if we directly look for payback, it's nothing but the amount that you have invested initially that is your cash outflow and this is your cash inflow. Uh, so it, it is giving you around 4 years. It should be like uh, 2500. 12,500 so it will give you four years so what does this amount indicate this four years shows that the amount you have invested in four returns will be giving me the after four years whatever amount you have invested you will be getting it fully and after that if your project goes on it will be your total benefit So this is for unequal cash flows. Unequal cash flow shows that every year your return may not be same. So in that, in that case you have different return. So whatever is your return, different amount, you just add them up, these returns. You just add them up and then divide it with the amount of outflow. So that will give you the, in terms of say here like fi final year was 3000. So 3000 was divided 1000 divided by 3000 where does this 1000 comes from you just add this up it will come to 19000 so remaining 1000 will be part of this one 3000 so that will give me four months 
So four months, three years, four months is the time taken to get the return on this investment. Again, the acceptance rule is the earlier I get my amount, the better it is for me to get that project. If I am investing in any project and it, if you are recovering it on a long term basis, then it's become risky for me to get returns out of it. And so the lesser the time, the better it is. So again, if you look for payback period, there is one of the very uh, big, big, big flaw in this error, in this method. That error is, or that flaw is, payback period is not discounting the factors that you're getting after certain years. And one more important thing is, it takes into account only for the number of years you're getting your returns. So after that, suppose after in four years, you're able to recover the amount that you have invested. So what will be my return after four years? Like after four, four years also, I might get some cash flow from that project. But this project, that this method is not taking that value into account. So this is one of the biggest drawback of payback method. So payback reciprocal is also one te te technique by which you try to get the required rate of return. And the uh, discounting factor on the payback is the development on the payback period, which takes into account the discounted factor of the amount that you have invested. So here, like if I give you an example here. See, initially this was the cash outflow and these are the cash inflow. So what you used to do is you to just add these whole amount and divide by this amount. So that used to give me two years. But in discounted method, you'll convert each and every year cash inflow with by discounting them with the discounted factor or the required rate of return. And then it will take give you the years will increase. Why? Because this every year if you keep on applying your discounted factor, this amount will decrease the whole amount will decrease so my denominator is decreasing and my denominator is decreasing and my numerator which is my cash outflow is increasing so my payback period has increased from 2 years to 2.6 years. So this is the uh, on payback method you can apply discounted factor to get the time value for time value of money but again there is one more flaw with this method is after 4 years what will even if your project continues that amount is not taken into account so this is also one of the drawback of discounted payback period which is